Hey everyone, welcome back to Small Arms Pistol Academy. I'm Mike Hanselman, if you're unaware of that. If you guys are new to the channel, thanks for watching. Make sure you guys do click the subscribe button down at the bottom. You can also find the alert button. Be notified every time we upload a new video. Today, we're gonna talk about the Smith & Wesson m and This is their performance center. And uh, I just, I really enjoy shooting this firearm. Now, I, there's a lot of problems with the gun, but overall, it's a phenomenal gun. I figured I'd break it down and let you guys know what I like, what I dislike about the gun overall, though. So if you are in the market and you are considering the Performance Center, especially the Ported Series, this is actually called the Ported or Core Series, I'm going to just let you know what I like or dislike about it. So... The, the short end of this is, while I'm a big fan of the gun, there's a lot of things that I do dislike about the gun overall, and I wanted to bring that to your guys' attention. The first thing about the gun of why I do like it, in this version here, it does not have a safety selector or anything. I'm a huge fan of firearms when they don't have additional safeties to it. So that's one thing I was a huge fan of, uh, getting rid of that. The other thing that I was a big fan of, it was already cut so I could mount an optic to it. And today I'm running the Trigicon RMR. This is the 3.25, I believe, for it. And it does have the plus and minus so I can make it brighter or, or dimmer depending on the lighting conditions of where I'm shooting. So a pretty cool feature with that. It seems to have a pretty solid base as far as a cut goes for a standard gun and, and that's a big fan. Uh, the other piece that I was uh, really impressed with was out of the box it did come with the elevated sights for it versus some uh, guns they don't have that feature they just have cheap sights you just basically you know knock them off put a different sight replacement on there and that's fine but now you have a gun we'll say it's 600 bucks and then you have to end up throwing more money into replacing your sights so you add another hundred dollars to it or something doesn't really make a lot of sense this gun came with those suppressor uh height sights on there to start off with so i was a big fan with that now as far as the firearm uh, what i really do enjoy about it and also dislike about it all at the same time is it does have the ported barrel and slide so let me open that and i'll show you guys you can see there's some blacking up here on the actual barrel and the reason why is it's cut or ported so that when I go to shoot, the pressure can actually escape up, keeping the gun really flat when I go to shoot instead of recoiling as much. So that's a really cool feature to it. The problem I have with this though, is the port starts right here. And because my sight is actually in front of it, what occurs is when that gas pressure comes up after a little bit, that front sight after shooting, you know, 10 rounds off, you can't find that front sight anymore. So that's the one big issue of why I dislike their setup compared to a threaded barrel with a compensator or something on the front of it. Um, but if you're not actually running those uh, iron sights, it doesn't really interfere with anything. Again, that's why I do have an optic on here. I don't have to rely on finding my front sight post for aiming or anything. So it doesn't really slow me down. It's just kind of annoying when you go to clean the gun. Is uh, I, I like to clean that off every single time. And I take a paint pen and just put a new white dot on there so I can actually see it if I wanted to use iron sights in case my optic was dead or something like that. At least I could see it. So again, that's the one problem. Now, going on with that of what I'll say issue number two is, is because all that burnt gas starts collecting or the carbon starts collecting up here on the barrel, it can be a pain in the butt to clean. It's not a huge deal overall. Uh, you can just take a little green score pad and just clean it off once in a while and you know, you're, you're good as new all over again. If you stay on top of it, it really doesn't become an issue. I don't like uh, wiping the barrel with something uh, that aggressive though. So I don't necessarily clean it every single time I shoot, but once in a while after shooting a few thousand rounds through it, I'll go back and definitely knock that off so that it's you know, all silver again and taken care of. And I don't have an issue. Uh, as far as the trigger goes, out of the box has had an awesome trigger. This is their Performance Center model again, so it does have a lot of those upgraded features already standard on the firearm, so really nice on that. Um, well, let's tear, tear it apart real quick and we'll talk about some of those things. So we're just going to verify there is no ammo in here. I like to actually feel inside here too to ensure there are no obstructions. So I tore it apart. The one upgrade I did do to it is after shooting this gun about, I want to say 10, 12,000 times, I, I needed to replace the internal springs and stuff. So what I did was actually add a different guide rod to it. And this is tungsten. So the tungsten guide rod is significantly heavier than what that standard guide rod would be inside here. 
And then I have, instead of having a sealed kit, this is actually a two piece. So you have the guide rod and then you have like a loose spring. So I ended up going this route and it adds a lot of weight to the front of the gun. So when you go to shoot, instead of having the recoil you naturally would have, it's a lot lighter recoil to it because of the weight that's up on the nose of the gun. So pretty, pretty cool right there. Uh, but that's really the only thing I've, I've had to replace on here after shooting it quite a bit. And uh, like I said, the other upgrade is I threw that Trigicon RMR on there. And that was just a preference. I really wanted the Trigicon. I mounted it up here. I'm, I'm not truly a huge fan of this particular optic. And one of the biggest reasons is the base plate and your battery have to make that contact so that it works all the time. So when I first bought this, I was having an issue with the optic staying on, but that has nothing to do with the firearm at all. It was simply the design of the RMR itself. So what I've been switching a lot of my firearms over to is that Holosun 507C where it has a separate sealed container for a battery compartment. And that's uh, kind of nice. I don't need to remove the optic when I replace it, the battery on that Holosun. On here, I'd have to actually take off my optic. But when I go to put it back on, uh, there's only two holes. So it goes right back into the, the same holes. I tighten them down. I don't have to actually worry about reciting in my optic or anything because you're not changing where it's going into. So it's pretty close once you put it back on there. I mean, you can always fine tune it, but not really a need to. Now this one here is actually chambered in nine millimeter. That's one of my favorite cartridges to fire off. So uh, a couple reasons why is one, it's very universal. So you can typically find it at most gun stores. Uh, maybe not during coronavirus, but you know, a, a standard thing, it's right there for you. And uh, the other reason I'm a big fan of 9 mil is with modern ammo, you don't necessarily need that 45 cartridge to do the damage if you were to conceal this. Now this is about the same uh, frame of what I would actually carry out in public uh, or what I prefer to carry is a full frame firearm. So if I go to grab this, all three of my lower fingers are fitting on here and that's something that's really important to me. A lot of times people don't like carrying a firearm that has a full frame or a full barrel. This is a four and a quarter inch, so slightly longer than what a lot of people would probably you know, prefer to carry. Uh, but for me, it, it all comes down to accuracy and simply with a longer barrel, you will shoot more accurate at a further distance. So if I'm gonna carry something, why would I want a tiny pocket pistol if I could carry this and it's not really in the way or anything, why not carry a larger frame where all of my fingers can fit on it and have a longer barrel so I could actually engage further out if I needed to. Because I don't find it to be annoying or anything, I do prefer to have that longer frame or a longer barrel and longer frame for the firearm for me. It has a real good feel to the grip, uh, but it, it is Smith & Wesson. And I've been shooting a lot of Glock recently and Glock and Smith & Wesson do have a different angle for their, their actual grip. And this one, when I first pick it up, it feels a little awkward to me, uh, but mainly because I'm so accustomed to shooting the Glock right now. But when I was shooting this firearm, and I would compete with this one once in a while, so when I was shooting this firearm, I never noticed anything with it. I, I actually truly do enjoy it. It sits back a little bit more, which is kind of nice when you go to put that secondary hand on the firearm. It gives you a more natural feel in my opinion. Uh, but it's just not my favorite gun for the simple fact of where the porting is. So I decided it was time to upgrade to a different firearm for my carry. Now, I do live in New York State, so I wanna say this gun uh, typically comes with a 15 round magazine. You get two of them. Uh, but because I live in New York, we're limited to a 10 round. So this is their New York compliant version. So I was given two 10 round magazines instead of those 15 round magazines. And uh, I, I don't know, overall, it's, it's a win for sure. It's definitely a, a fun shooting firearm. I love taking it out to the range. I have a, a lot of fun with it. It does have my accessory rail. So typically I'd be running a flashlight on here again, just for a little bit added weight to it to reduce my recoil even more while shooting. So it's very flat shooting. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a, a good shooting gun. It feels good in your hand and a cool feature that Smith and Wesson does do with a lot of their firearms now. So do a lot of other manufacturers, but they give you the different back straps. So if you have a smaller hand or a larger hand, you could actually change your back strap so that it's a better fit for you. And that's a really cool feature to this. Uh, this one I want to say is the mediums that I have on here. I don't have the largest hands, but it just fits my hand really well. It gives me a nice feel to the firearm while shooting. 
As far as operating your slide release and stuff go, although they don't stick out as far as what some guns do, they stick out enough that you can work those. And if you were gonna go with that gross motor, it's a nice simple motion as well. But yeah, just hitting it with that thumb, there's no real pressure being utilized by anything and I can work my action not using a lot of extra force or anything. So again, it's a win. I, I'm a big fan of Smith & Wesson. I think they make phenomenal products and uh, they proved it with a Porta Decor series right here by Performance Center. Uh, again, it's the M&P with a four and a quarter inch barrel. Uh, two 10 round magazines. The gun overall is about $600 and uh, it also was compatible to put an optic and that and that's what Core stood for is um, competition optic ready pistols. So right here I did add that Trigicon. It's phenomenal. So I highly recommend it. If you guys are interested in getting a new firearm, I would definitely it'd be worth your time at least picking up, you know, a, a Smith & Wesson and getting the feel for it. They have a lot of newer firearms, like their 2.0s and so forth, that have some different features and stuff, or maybe the easy, so it's actually an easier slide to operate and so forth for someone that maybe has smaller hands or female shooters. But overall, Smith & Wesson for the win with this one. Thanks again for watching, guys. Make sure you do hit that like, leave a comment, something like that down below. Uh, I'd greatly appreciate it.